Hey folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works. Uh, we just got back from the uh, 2022 Hive Life Conference. Man, we had a blast there. There were some awesome speakers, uh, great vendors, like 30, 30, 34 vendors there with some really good deals. If you haven't seen our video yet on uh, the vendors, I'll leave a link below, check that out. We got to speak with uh, several awesome folks, some friends and um, good beekeepers, some YouTube folks. We spoke with Bob Benny, uh, Nathan from Duck River Honey. We talked with Kent Williams, a Yappy Bee Man. My buddy John Clark from uh, Clark Bees and Such. We talked with uh, Natalie from Beekeeping Like a Girl. Uh, the 628 Dirt Rooster. And stay tuned to the end. We talked with Cayman uh, Reynolds about this year's conference and what's in store for next year. So let's take a look at some of these folks we talked with. Hey folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works. We're at the Hive Life Conference 2022, and we were able to uh, get Bob Benny cornered up here. Bob, what do you think about the conference so far this year? I think it's been great. I've been to several large conferences, and this is as good as any I've been to. Uh, I'm actually quite surprised at how well it turned out. I know Cayman is, so this is just his second one, and I have to commend him for what he's been able to pull off here. Good vendor turnout, sure. that's so yeah. important that part of a good convention is having a good vendor turnout. At least I enjoy visiting with all the vendors. It's not just you know a few bars of soap and a few jars of honey. This is a serious yeah. vendor sure. show here, and uh, I think that's a big part of the convention. And good speakers, too. He's had some good speakers. Yeah, yeah both this year uh, and last year as well, very good speakers. Um, the uh, you know but the vendor turned out just enormous compared yeah, to last year. Very nice. Uh, so, well, what do you think? I mean, I have I've absolutely loved it. Uh, just conversations like this, just yeah. getting to talk with, oh, with yeah. you all. Um, it just uh, you know brings every all, a lot of like-minded people together yeah. and gives them a chance to share ideas and uh, and things that you uh, may not even thought of. You know, you can you can glean from these things and, and really learn a lot. Something else that's a little different than other conventions here is that this, I would say 80 or 90 percent of the people here are kind of a part of a YouTube community, YouTube sure. here channel, yeah. and you know, I've got mine, and there's several other people here that have YouTube channels, and that's how these people learned about this convention, and it's kind of a community. Although I don't know a lot of the people here, I recognize their names because I see their comments on your channel and other channels, sure. and yeah. Stepler's channels, and of course, uh, Cayman's channel, so even though I don't know them really, just seeing their name tag, suddenly I feel like I just sure. saw, saw an old friend or something like that, so yeah. it's cool in that respect, too. So we, we all would probably agree that Varroa mite is one of the bigger issues uh, uh, with beekeeping. Public enemy number one. Public enemy number one, but outside of that, what do you see as the biggest issue for beekeepers? Well, you know, there's a, several things I would look at. Um, Nutrition's a problem, you know, obviously monoculture, if you're around agriculture at all, so much of the wildflowers have disappeared. We're a little lucky in our neighborhood because a lot of our honey comes from the woods and, and the brush, the pollen and the honey, but for a lot of people in some of these prairie states, so much of that has disappeared. I would say nutrition's a big one, and then not only monoculture, but and I'm guilty too, of having a very nice yard. You know, my property sure. fairly yeah. clean when I can get around to it. Yeah. Yeah. So even uh, even the urbanization has taken away a lot of the nutrition from the bees. The wildflowers yeah. just aren't there anymore. So that's a struggle. And that's good that we were talking about nutrition here. Can't hit upon it so much, you know. We can supplement some. Can't, nothing replaces mother nature, but we sure. can do the best we can to help them along. It takes education. You need to know a little bit of what, right. what you're doing, and that's what's occurring here. So a funny story. Uh, I was in a, a Mexican restaurant a few months back, and uh, I we're leaving. And as we leave, the, a guy walks in. I look over, and it's Bob. And uh, we're in Paducah, Kentucky. Um, Bob's passing, passing through. You're going to uh, going to Iowa to speak to the Iowa honey producers. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, I I turn and I look and look, took a double take, and I'm, I. I call his name out and he looks over like you know who else is named Bob in here well, right? yeah I actually looked behind me to see who you were talking to and yeah. there was nobody there <laughs> so, I was shocked I was yeah shocked. I was too just very uh, 
you know, kind of coincidental that we ran into each other there. Yeah, yeah the, the world works that way sometimes. So yeah, it's cool. All so, right, Bob. Okay, well, well thank you. It's very good much. talking with you. A pleasure to see you again. Yeah. Thank and, you. And uh, I'll meet you in Paducah, Kentucky next year. <laughs> All right. Hey, folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works. We're here with Nathan from uh, Duck River Honey Company. Man, what do you think about the conference this year? I'm really kind of shocked at how good it's been. Um, there's a lot of people here, there's a lot of energy here, and you go and talk to the vendors, which is really the success of the show. If the vendors do well, the show's going to do well. Yeah. And, you know, there's vendors that sold out in the first three hours yeah. of the show. They were shocked. Like, we should have brought a lot more product than yeah. we did. Um, I talked to one vendor who goes, I'm not going to name him, but he goes all over Canada and the U.S. Mm -hmm. to beekeeping shows. And he was just amazed at sure. how good this one is. It's uh, It's been really something. It's really been something. Were you here last year? Or I was last year. Okay. Now, yeah. this, this weekend is my wife's birthday. Oh, yeah. So I am using a lot of brownie points to be here. <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to have yeah. to make it up when I get home. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so last year, um, it, was, it was very good. The content was very good. But the vendors just did not have the vendors. I think there was maybe yeah. like two maybe three vendors and a guy or two showing off some kind of newer products they had and man this year i don't know what it is maybe 30 plus vendors but it's uh it's it's awesome from that from the well, whole there's whole a, there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of but it's just the overall energy that man everybody's just happy to be here oh yeah, yeah everybody's sure. just happy to be here and uh, it's just neat it's just really neat to be a part of sure so i've been asking uh, similar questions uh, Outside of Royal Might, what do you think the beekeeper, beekeeper's biggest challenge is? It depends on scale and experience, but the biggest challenge that I see is new beekeepers getting over the first two-year hump of knowledge because it's just overwhelming. It's like you're trying to raise aliens. You know, bees don't reproduce like people or mammals or anything. It's just completely different. So just getting a, a grasp on the big picture of their life cycle and how we can influence their behavior and how they react to what we do and, sure. and all that, you know. The things, if you look at beekeeping, avoiding bad outcomes is really the, the first step. Yeah. And bad outcomes are dead bees. So the ways that bees die are gonna be varroa mites, of course. Um, you're going to deal with varroa mites in one way or another. Even if you wanna be a treatment-free beekeeper, sure. you're going to deal with them in one way or another. Uh, the second is going to be a queen, and a queen dies, you go laying worker, whatever. And then the third is nutrition. If they run out of food, they're going to die. So if you get your head wrapped around that and swarm management and that sort of stuff, it gets a whole lot easier, you know, once you sure. just have a basic understanding of those things. Yes. Yes. So your uh, YouTube channel has uh, been very successful. We've been had a channel for a couple of years now, is that uh, right? right? I've been posting videos for right at a year. You're out of the year, so mm -hmm. yeah. And what are you? You're around seven thousand. So like seventy, eight hundred. Yeah, like so that. that's that's just crazy uh, fast. So what, what do you think attributes to some of your success? Honestly, I think I'm kind of weird. Um, I've always been a sort of a social misfit, but I've got a background in agricultural economics, and I just I think about things differently than a lot of people do, and it's almost like I think in bullet points, and I think I if I have a talent. I think it is for explaining complicated things in a way that people can understand. Sure. Okay. So I, I can I can explain complicated things in a simple way, and I'm not, I didn't start YouTube to be a business or anything like that. It is it's a charity work for me. You know, I've spent sure. more on video okay. equipment than yeah. uh, my channel will probably earn in the first three years. But my end goal is to help pollinators. We need to change our land use, our pesticide use, our farming use, sure. so that pet pollinators can be successful into the future. That's got to happen. And the way that I think I can help with that is by helping to make more beekeepers. Getting people over that first two year hump. If we can get enough beekeepers, man, nobody cares about pollinators like beekeepers do. Yeah, sure. So if we've got enough beekeepers that write enough letters to legislators that know what to do and how to do it and care then i think that we can get there so that that's why i'm doing it yeah sure i, th I think that's where most of us are 
um, you know, we're not not looking for you know to grow a huge YouTube channel or yeah. to you know to be YouTube famous, I guess. But I am not a social media person. Yeah. You know, I'm not outgoing. I'm not charismatic. Anything like that. Yeah. If, if anything, um, I almost became a college professor when I was in grad school, but I did not want to live in a college town. So I've got more of that, that type mentality. I'd rather be in the back corner of the room than in the front. Well, man, we appreciate uh, you talking with us. It was good to meet you here at the conference this year, and appreciate your, your videos and what you're doing for bees and, and pollinators. So, yeah, I appreciate man. it. Good talking to you. Yeah, thank you. Hey folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works. Uh, we're at the Hive Life 2022 conference and we've uh, caught up with Kent Williams here. Uh, he was one of the speakers at the conference. Kent, uh, what do you think about this year's conference? Really good. Uh, last year's was one of the better conferences that I've ever been to and I've been to a lot of conferences. And this year's was even better than last year's conference. Yeah. I was really impressed with it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there were more people at this conference than any other conference in the country this year. Sure. And everybody everybody were serious beekeepers and it was a good conference, good information, good people here. A lot yeah. of vendors, a lot of good vendors. There was a lot of vendors. It, um, there was a lot of uh, a lot of new vendors here this year. Last year just a few vendors with the getting started, but they, there's a lot of vendors here this year. Yeah. So we can all agree that Varroa mite is the number one uh, threat to uh, the honeybee. Um, outside of uh, Burrow Mike, what would you say the, the next thing that beekeepers need to watch? Well, you always have to be watching for that next thing that's just over the horizon that you don't see coming until it really whacks you. Um, that's, that's the short answer to what we need to be watching for. But uh, I think the real, the real hot topic, not just at this conference, but that should be on everybody's mind, is nutrition and the, the role that proper nutrition at the proper time had the role it plays with colony health, overall colony health. And I think a uh, misunderstanding of what bees actually need at different times of the year has caused us a lot of problems in the past and we're beginning to understand that better now. And people like Bob Benny that are really good at, uh, at relating that you know what what time nutrition at what time for the hive um, they're good people to listen to well kim as always we uh, enjoy listening to your, your talks and uh and getting to see you and visit with you kent uh kent does, he, he probably doesn't realize how big of a role he's played in my success as a beekeeper hmm. um kent is a part of our was part of our local uh beekeeping club um there where i was at in kentucky before north tennessee um just a wealth of knowledge and always willing to answer questions and uh, help me with uh, with anything I had, even if it was a dumb dumb newbie mm. bee uh, beekeeper question. So, Kent, we really appreciate it, and uh, well, it's good you. to see you again. Thank you. Appreciate right. that. Yep. Action. Hey, folks. Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works, and we've got Yappy the Bee Man with us today. So uh, what do you think about the conference so far? Man, I'm loving it. Um, what's really great about this, I was, unfortunately, I couldn't make it last year. And, uh, you know, to, to hear what happened last year and now be here and see, you know, the, triple the amount of people, the amount of vendors, um, you know, thankfully COVID has kind of given us a break and allowed to have more happen. But uh, uh, where this thing's gonna go is gonna be phenomenal. I really, th there's been little talks and rumors going around that this is probably gonna turn into the Super Bowl of, oh, yeah. of yeah. you know, the sure. bee conventions. Um, it's weird because, you know, Super Bowls are usually at the end of season, and here we are kicking our season off with it, so it's pretty cool. I love it. So, yeah, I was there last year. We, uh, the vendor, like, the vendors was, like, in this little, you know, entrance to this building. Like, there was, yeah. like, a one vendor and maybe a guy that had, like, a little experimental thing he was showing off. Maybe maybe two vendors, so, yeah, this is, I don't know how many they got here this year, but it's, it's tremendous. Um, yeah. I'm gonna, we're, we've got every bit of probably there's got to be at least 30 plus vendors here. So to go from three to 30, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. So you primarily focus on cutouts. That's, I do. You, you do a lot of cutouts. Um, I've done a few myself, I, you know, through videos like yours and the Dirt Rooster. Yes. Um, I've, I've learned a lot from that. Cut out, you know, done six or eight different cutouts out of houses and things yeah. like that. So what what's your favorite part about cutouts? You know, 
It, it's funny you ask that because for me, when it comes to cutouts, here's my little humorous joke. To me, it's like a Christmas present. Every time you open something up, okay? We know that the tree's there, the gifts are under there, and I even saw one with my name on it. It's happy right there. And I know I'm getting one, I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Well, in this case, I know I've got this wall full of bees, but is it gonna be big? Is it gonna be small? Or are they gonna be nice? Are they gonna be, you know, just hate me? Am I gonna get a lot of honey? What is that queen gonna look like? Sure. I love finding queens and I love to see the variances in their colors. Um, so many different things like that. So to me, it's every one of them being like a Christmas present. Sure. Well, man, it's definitely good talking with you. And uh, Thank we, you. Uh, we enjoy meeting up with all you guys and the, the, uh, you know, the vendors and the, the speakers and all the YouTube folks. So had a good time and it's good seeing you. Well, and uh, I hope you guys get to make it back next year. Um, you know, and, and the folks that are watching this, I hope you guys, you know, work it out. You, you, you don't realize how much of a almost family reunion this is. Sure. Um, it's it's really great because we interact with each other through the uh, social media platforms. But the the chance to have an, a time to speak with you, shake your hand in person, yeah. it's it's well worth the money. So uh, we we'll look forward to you know you guys being here next year. Yeah. All right, thanks, brother. Yeah. You brought. Yeah. Hey, folks. Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works again. We're at the uh, 2022 Hive Life Conference. I've got my buddy here, uh, John, from uh, Clark's Bees and such, and uh, we've been hanging out. We met last year at the conference, uh, same conference, and uh, we've stayed in contact through uh, social media and, uh, and a few text messages. So, man, what do you think about the conference so far? Josh is going pretty well. Uh, bigger group, bigger crowd this year than last year, but uh, some great beekeepers some great knowledge it's been fun uh, certainly networking with the folks that are here oh, yeah. you know all your YouTube stars or, or not all of them but we've got, we've got several of them yeah. right it's plenty of experts and what you know we do, Josh and I just had uh, lunch with Cayman Reynolds we sat down at our table and we we're talking and one of the things that stands out to me about the Hive Life Conference and the beekeepers that do come here to help and share information everybody's humble oh, I mean yeah. everybody's they're, they're willing to help you whether they, they're bottling 1.2 million barrels of honey yeah. each year or if they've got one hive i mean they're sitting down talking networking's been great uh, learning from from various level beekeepers that's been tremendous so enjoy that so you know we got several challenges as uh beekeep beekeepers uh trying to keep our bees healthy and productive excluding varroa mite what would you say the biggest uh challenge to beekeepers well, I'll, I'll give it a two-part answer to that question, Josh. Uh, sure. I would say for the normal small size hobby beekeeper, besides the grow mite, I'd say the biggest challenge for me is making sure I have plenty of food, plenty of feed in the bees, nutrition, especially during the dearth, because you know, if you've got four or five colonies sitting there, four or five hives on your, in your bee yard, and you're in a dearth, they're going to start robbing, and that causes all kind, makes all kind of havoc. So that's, that's one answer. The second answer would be, how big are you? Are you at 20 hives? Are you, you and I have talked a lot about equipment this sure. weekend. Yeah, yeah. Where in the world do you put all that equipment? How do you organize that equipment? Where's it, you know, how do you stack it up in your barns? Or, you know, when you go out to the bee yards, you have out, out yards, you know, how do you make sure you have the right equipment with you when you drive 20 miles oh, yeah. to check on the bee yard? So I, that's my number two challenge, I guess sure. I'd say. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with, with your, you know, your number one there. Um, knowing when to feed, how much to feed, am I feeding too much, am I not feeding enough? That's probably one of the trickier things um, as a new beekeeper is, is to learn that, you know, to, to learn to read the hive and, and see what's in the cone, what's coming yeah. in and what they're using, where they're at in their reproductive uh, stages. So yeah, I would totally agree. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty tough It's thing. a challenge. Yeah. If you can master, master mites and master nutrition, you, you're, you're, you're on an easy ways. street. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'd say so. All right, man, well, I appreciate it. Good hey, talk with you. Thank you, and, Josh, uh, appreciate we'll it. See you next year. Yeah. We'll see you. Hey folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works. Uh, we're here at the uh, 2022 Hive Life Conference, and we caught up with Natalie from Beekeeping Like a Girl. Yep. So uh, what do you think about the conference so far? It's an amazing conference. Cameron Laurel did a really good job putting it together. And if you ever have a chance to come, you definitely should. It's really worth the money. The vendors here are amazing. There's a lot of cool stuff to look at, a lot of cool stuff to talk about, a lot of people to talk to if you want to learn a lot. Uh, pretty much anybody that I've been stopped by, I've learned a lot from. So, uh, yeah, you can learn a lot from beekeeping and definitely uh, recommend it. What's, what's been your favorite part about the conference? Favorite part? Most of it, pretty much all of it. I don't really have anything bad to say about the conference. 
except for the fact that Kevin keeps picking on me, but you know, it's whatever. I just pick on the back. And then, um, let's see. I really like, it's kind of hard to explain a little bit. I've tried to talk about it a little bit before, but, you know, talking to just, uh, you know, some friends or whatever, they might not know exactly what you're talking about when it comes to me keeping stuff, but then coming to these conferences, just being able to talk like this and you know what I'm talking about, um, you'll walk away knowing a little bit. And so it's really nice to just be able to talk to people and just learn more. So, like, I'm going to leave this conference knowing so much more. And, yeah. Um, definitely have a lot of cool products, so I think it's just like everything in general, just walking away with so much has been really, really great. But I like the round table too, that's probably one of my favorite parts. And of course, Bob. Bob does a really great job on talking. So, yeah, what do you think? What's your favorite part? I, I, I like it all as well. Um, I really like, like you said, talking with other beekeepers, yeah. and, you know, the, get to, to intermingle and, and talk with all, all different types of, uh, you know, Talk about different issues and, and different yeah. um, get strategies. Stuff out together yeah. Um, so you know, there's like they say, if you ask uh, ten beekeepers uh, the same question, you'll get twenty yep. answers. You know? uh -huh. So there's a lot of you know, not every answer fits to everybody's operation. So you can find you know good op good answers to fit your operation. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I really like talking with everybody, and also we got a lot of good deals. Um, yes. So I did some pre-orders, and I actually had to rent a U-Haul um, really? uh, trailer to take home. Even though I brought a pickup truck, so <laughs> yeah, so we're yes. really excited about the uh, the savings that we had here, and, yeah. and just to see all the all the different products as well. Yeah. Um, Kamen, you know, he does give you a hard time sometimes. Yeah, but, but I just hit right back at him. That's I've right. been talking bad about him pretty much all week. All uh, just pretty much every person I see, I'll say something about Kamen, make a joke, so he has no clue. That's the best part. Well, well sure. I mean, it's it's a pretty. Um, well-known fact that he's not a real big guy, you know? Yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> so I, I don't, I'm not sure that maybe you couldn't take him if it comes to, you know, a fistico, so. I don't know. I'm having a good time talking about him, though. I can find out some stuff. Anyways. All right. Yeah, he's so busy, though, he can't even really talk to me, so it's great. I can just keep talking about him. Can't, can't respond. That's yeah. great. That's awesome. Thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate Yeah, appreciate talking with you. Yeah. And, uh, forward to uh, seeing more of your videos. Uh, do you have anything else, Facebook or outside well, of YouTube? Uh, pretty much just doing YouTube. Maybe eventually I'll start to like Instagram. Uh, we'll see. But right now I'm just doing YouTube. Okay. I think that's what I'm yeah. All right. Well, go check out Natalie's videos. Uh, Thank you. My, my daughters are a big fan of her, so go check her out. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works. We're at the 2022 Hive Live Conference and we ran into Randy, the 628 Dirt Rooster. So what are you thinking about the conference so far, Randy? It's been awesome. It's the biggest conference I've ever been to and the vendor turnout has been incredible. And the, the uh, sales have been awesome. So we came and had to fight to get some of these vendors here this year. I think next year they're gonna be fighting to get here, which yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of good information, some great speakers. Oh, it's just been, it's been a madhouse in there for two days. <laughs> it has been, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, outside of doing your cutout stuff, you're a beekeeper yeah. as well. Um, right. Outside of rural mites, what do you think the most challenging thing is for beekeepers now? For me, it's uh, finding time to manage my colonies properly. I'm sure. running a couple businesses and I'm just busy all the time, so yeah. I stay I try to stay around 50 colonies. I sometimes get up to 100 or so during the year, but uh, when, when you're running a bunch of businesses and doing cutouts and doing, trying, trying to do YouTube videos and a lot of stuff really takes a lot of your time. So getting out in the yard and, and uh, on a regular schedule and doing proper management is tough. Okay. Um, so I have, I wondered this, uh, I had the same question whenever I first uh, found out, found your YouTube channel, I've had a, um, heard people ask you this this weekend. But 628 Dirt Rooster, what's, what's that mean? That's my dirt bike. This was gonna, originally it was gonna be a dirt biking channel. I was gonna get back in shape, start riding again. I used to ride a lot. So the bike I had when I started the channel was an old XR600 with a 628 big bore kit. And Rooster was the name of my dirt bike. And so gotcha. by the time the channel got big enough, when I realized the channel was gonna even be anything, I wanted to change the name of it. By that time it got, it was too big and it was too late. So, yeah. so then now, now I've gotten the nickname, which was my motorcycle. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I appreciate you talking with you and had a, had a good time hanging out with you. Man, it's, been, it's been great. Yeah. Have you gotten to visit with everybody that's been around? There's I have, been yeah, yeah. Bruce's Bees and, and Yaffe and uh, 
Dang, who else? They, Greg Burns and yeah, Natalie. I'm to keep you like Natalie and here. Uh, Mike Barry. Mike Barry. Yep. Dude, everybody's here. Of course, Bob Benny and Bob Cayman. Uh, Cayman. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a really cool conference where all uh, all the folks that you enjoy watching on YouTube and then that you um, you know manage have the same management techniques all come together in one yeah. place like this. It's pretty all right, man. Thanks again. Yeah. Good to see you. Yep. Hey folks, Josh Hager here with Bearded Bee Works or at the 2022 Hive Life Conference. We just caught up with Cayman Reynolds and uh, we're going to talk with him about the conference this year and the upcoming conference next year. So Cayman, it's been a, an awesome conference. I'm sure you're all right. Look like you're barely standing up right now. Uh, I'm doing okay. I definitely don't look as chipper as I usually do. My voice is about gone, but appreciate you coming back again and being, you know, you've, you've been here since the inception of this. and. Um, you know, I remember going out to dinner with you and um, Randy McCaffrey and his brother and another fellow, I can't remember his name, but every one of you had a big beard and I felt like I was eating with Duck Dynasty. But, and of course I was the only one that was clean shaven. And then there's Laurel too, I guess. So I guess I was kind of in the girl group when it comes to that. Well, we're, you know, we're trying to talk Laurel and let you grow a beard. I mean, I, I really want to see that next year, but I, I just can't gain any ground. I don't know what it's going to take, but. Um, is there like a chocolate or a candy or something? No, that would, there's, that there's, help? I have I've talked to her about it. She says that she will shave it off in my <laughs> sleep. And she, just, she, said, uh, she will not allow a beard. That's, that's the end. Well, I mean, um, there's just some things, you, you know. Got to pick your battles. Yep. Yep. Pick your battles. So, you know, like I said, this conference is great. Got a lot of good speakers, a lot of good, um, you know, huge amount of vendors, really good deals. I, I actually rented a small U-Haul trailer to get home everything that I bought. Did you so, really? And I brought a pickup truck, um, and I still couldn't get it off. So um, just, you know, awesome savings and good products. So what what do we got in store for next year? More and better. So this year, being a new conference like we are, of course, we've, we've done one before, but really it's only been about a year and three months since we even thought about doing conferences. And, and when you do that, you, you start off, nobody really knows who you are unless you have something working for you. And we're really fortunate that we have a YouTube channel that's worked out pretty good for us. And also that um, we have several friends like you and other influencers who have YouTube channels that are able to um, basically advertise and, and represent I mean, what we're doing and what we're trying to change, which is not just education, but also a different way of getting product. Because it's, it's a win for the vendors. Um, they're excited because they can... It's so efficient for them to be able to load up a semi or a, a big truck or a U-Haul and just come out here and in one shot make a huge delivery. And so for the labor and for what they're selling, it's a big win for them. And, and then on the flip side for you all, especially on the bulkier, heavier products, then you can get that shipping off. A lot of times get a, you know, some of these guys 10 to 15, 20% off as well. Yeah. So we want more of that. And now that we have had good success and I say we also the vendors the, I've heard nothing but exciting news from the vendors and that excites me because I, I promised them we do a good job for them yep. and so we have and I think that's really going to help us be able to say hey guys you know we this, this is where we want to make some um, adjustments to help our attendees can you help me with that and since we have multiple ones typically doing some of the similar things I think it's a real possibility we'll have more deals better deals and we're also reaching out to uh, Denmark Poland um, companies in the UK, more companies in Canada, several things like that, and going to try to get some really odd and unique products, odd in a good way, and bring them over here so we can kind of see what we like. And sure. that's that's one thing. You know, when I got into beekeeping 18 years ago, a lot of the stuff that I saw at this conference, I had never seen before until today. A lot of that product, especially the lysin and the Zivin extractors, Savon, or all that, and. So and the, some of the, the pumps and things, and we're talking maybe about getting cowing out here next year. And sure. so I want beekeepers to be able to see what they're buying before they get it, and also be able to save money because that's the way I want to be treated. So if we can do that, that's a big win right there. It's a good draw for our conference. Sure. Well, we want to thank uh, you and Laurel for all the work that you put in, and, and everybody else involved as well. I know you know you, you've got a you know you guys have done the brutal of the work, but you had some help as well. So we want to thank everybody that's been involved. Um, on a lighter note, um, I was able to talk with uh, Natalie from uh, Beekeeping Like a Girl, and I feel like there's a little tension there. You know, like you know, she she, she had a couple couple blows there. You know, that might end up in this video. So what what do you what do you say about that? She's um, jealous of my good looks and my charm. I see. Okay. You know, um, it's only natural. I mean, you know, 
She's 13. I don't expect her to act like a 33-year-old. Um, you know, one of these days, maybe. Um, she kind of takes after her dad, Chris. Um, you know, a little bit um, insecure, probably, and a couple things like that. <laughs> Natalie's going to kill me. <laughs> no, Natalie's a great. Um, I was so excited that she was able to come again. She had some really good shirts this year. I, I really love the um, Be Keeping Like a Girl shirt. Yeah. And um, I got a special shirt made just for me. I heard something about this shirt. Yeah. yeah. Her yeah. And, uh, and Randy McCaffrey. So yeah. Randy got a three to one. Mm -hmm. I got yeah. a two to one, and, and Natalie got a one to one shirt. So um, perfect, perfect. I, I thought that was uh, hilarious. Um, so a lot of times she don't tell her I said this um, you know she'd be like what's up two to one and I'll go and eh, nothing one to one so you know she secretly actually likes me all right you know she, she just um she just doesn't want anybody to know but the cat's out of the bag now you all are in on the scoop <laughs> okay man thanks again we appreciate uh, everything you do uh, for the beekeeping community and for uh, the uh, you know this conference so thanks again and we we uh, look forward to more videos in the next year's conference. Hey, killer right. beard man. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, and right. we'll see you in the future. All right. Thank you. Hey, folks, we're wrapping up here at the 2022 uh, Hive Life Conference. Man, it's been a great, uh, great couple of days. Um, like we talked about, we've had a lot of good speakers, a uh, huge amount of vendors, and um, if you guys uh, are able to make it to this next year, I would highly recommend it. Um, probably the best uh, beekeeping conference in the country for sure and, and maybe even uh, challenging stuff worldwide so if you can make it next year I highly encourage it um, if you like what you see here uh, hit that like button and uh, please subscribe to our channel so we'll see you next time